video is covering the key concepts of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, which are important concepts in both photosynthesis and respiration, as they play a crucial role in the production of ATP from ADP, an inorganic phosphate. In this video, we will look at the structures involved, the processes of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, and the difference between oxidative and photophosphorylation. In eukaryotic cells, the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis occur in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast and in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. These are adapted to provide a large surface area to make the processes as efficient as possible. In chloroplasts, flattened disk-like structures, thylakoids, stack on top of each other to form grana, singular is granum. The grana are connected by these intergranal lamellae, so they can work together. In mitochondria, the inner membrane is folded inwards to form finger-like projections called cristi, as you can see here. So now we have looked at where the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis occur, let's look at the first process, the electron transport chain. In eukaryotic cells, the electron transport chain is a series of redox reactions that occur in the inner mitochondrial membrane and the thylakoid membrane of chloroplasts. These reactions involve the transfer of electrons down a chain of protein complexes embedded in the membrane linked by mobile electron carriers. The purpose of the electron transport chain is to transfer energy stored in the high energy electrons to chemical energy stored in ATP. As the electrons are passed from electron carrier to electron carrier down the electron transport chain, they release energy. This energy is used to actively pump protons, hydrogen ions, across the membrane into the intermembrane space either the intermembrane space of the Christi or the thylakoids. The protons are pumped into the intermembrane space from the liquid part of the organelle, the matrix in mitochondria and stroma in chloroplasts. The intermembrane space is a narrow, compartmentalised region which allows a high concentration of protons to build up rapidly. The pumping of protons sets up an electrochemical gradient with a higher concentration of protons in the intermembrane space compared to the matrix or stroma. This electrochemical gradient is important for the process of chemiosmosis, which is when the ATP is produced. But before we look at chemiosmosis, let's look a little bit more closely at how these electrons are passed along the chain. The protein complexes that act as electron carriers act as electron donors and acceptors. Electron donors pass their electrons to electron acceptors and during this reaction the electron donors are oxidised and the acceptors are reduced. Because one molecule is reduced while the other is oxidised, these reactions are known as redox reactions. Remember oil rig, oxidation is the loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons. So let's look at where these redox reactions occur in the electron transport chain. The initial electron donors in the electron transport chain are reduced NAD and FAD in aerobic cellular respiration and chlorophyll A in photosynthesis. As the reduced NAD and FAD and the chlorophyll A donate their electrons to the electron transport chain, they are oxidised and the electron acceptor is reduced. This electron acceptor now passes or donates the electrons to the next electron carrier in the chain in another redox reaction and this process continues as the electrons are transferred along the chain. To allow more electrons to enter the electron transport chain, electrons must leave it. If electrons do not leave the chain, there is a gridlock, a bit like cars entering a street but none leaving it. It results in a traffic jam. Electrons cannot leave the electron transport chain by themselves. They have to be passed to a final electron acceptor that will carry the electrons away from the end of the chain. The final electron acceptor receives the electrons from the last electron carrier in the chain and so is reduced and at the same time binds to protons. This means that the electrons can continue to flow along the chain allowing the pumping of protons ready for chemiosmosis. Now that we have looked at the electron transport chain, let's move to the process of chemiosmosis. 
Chemiosmosis is the process by which ATP is generated as protons flow back down their electrochemical gradient through special transmembrane proteins called ATP synthases. The ATP synthases do just what their name suggests. They synthesise ATP by combining ADP and inorganic phosphate. The A's in their name tells you that they are enzymes. But how is the energy provided to bring about this anabolic reaction? Well, the protons are moving down their concentration and chemical gradient. This electrochemical gradient has potential energy, which is transformed into kinetic energy. As the protons diffuse through the ATP synthase, their energy is used to drive the rotation of a part of the enzyme. This rotation causes a change in the shape of the active site of the ATP synthase, allowing it to bind with the ADP and inorganic phosphate to bring about the phosphorylation of ADP to form ATP. This phosphorylation of ADP to produce ATP through the processes of the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis is known as oxidative phosphorylation in cellular aerobic respiration and photophosphorylation in photosynthesis. In aerobic respiration, it is named oxidative phosphorylation as oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain in mitochondria. In photosynthesis, it is named photophosphorylation because light energy is the source of the energy carried by the electrons into the electron transport chain. So in this video, we have seen that the transfer of electrons between carriers in the electron transport chain occurs in the membranes of the Christi and thylakoids. The transfer of electrons through redox reactions releases energy, which is used to form a proton gradient. Chemiosmosis is when protons diffuse down the electrochemical gradient through ATP synthases to generate ATP by phosphorylation of ADP. Electron acceptors are needed at the end of the electron transport chain to maintain the electrochemical gradient for chemiosmosis. Electron acceptors are reduced at the end of the electron transport chain. Oxidative phosphorylation occurs in the mitochondria and oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Photophosphorylation occurs in the chloroplasts and light is the source of the energy carried by the electrons into the electron transport chain. Note that the buzzwords are highlighted and these are the words that are important to include in your written answers. So, overall, the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis are key concepts in understanding how cells generate ATP through the processes of respiration and photosynthesis.